While Sekiro shares quite a few conventions with FromSoft's earlier titles, there's just as much unique about it to argue classification into a genre of its own. Wolf doesn't have stats in an RPG sense, and the sin that Sekiro enemies drop instead of souls is far less useful for us since it can't be used to instantly max level Wolf in the same way a duplication glitch could in a Souls game. There's no multiplayer, no magic, no alternate weapons to move swap, so what's left? Despite Sekiro's lack of traditional Souls mechanics, the exploits you can do in this game are no less compelling, and in fact, make up some of the most technically complex glitches I've ever had the honor of showcasing on this channel. It's finally time. Let's break Sekiro. First things first, get your sword and lose that left arm. Damn thing just gets in the way, frankly. Genichiro is now in possession of the Divine Heir and is headed to Ashina Castle, so so are we. There are quite a few obstacles between the dilapidated temple and Ashina Castle, though. A total of six idols and five bosses. Two of them are the optional samurai generals that just drop prayer beads, but the other three, being the Chained Ogre, Kyobu Oniwa, and Blazing Bull, all have fog walls that block your exit, meaning they're mandatory kills. Or at least, they're supposed to be. We're going to skip all of them. Here's how to do it. Using your shiny new arm, grapple the root at the dilapidated temple and grab the Ashna outskirts idol. Proceed along the cliffs until reaching the gate path idol and the first of two optional generals, who can just be ran past without the need of a glitch. Also make sure to get the young lord's bell charm from the old woman while you're here. A glitch we'll do later in the video will make picking up this item impossible and may soft lock your playthrough if you don't get it now. Not that I would know anything about that, of course. Just beyond her lies the outskirts wall stairway idol and the chained ogre. This giant door past the ogre will remain closed all the way until the final act of the game when the Red Guard Ministry invades Ashina. Instead, you're meant to grapple into the hole just above it, but as long as the ogre's alive, fog will be blocking that grapple point. That we can't change, unless we avoid using it altogether. Anyone that's played Sekiro knows that there is both a dedicated jump button and a dedicated ledge grab button on the controller, both moves that Wolf can execute at any time. But there's another not so basic movement technique I need to teach you before we move forward. Although it's extremely tight, there is a one frame window between the end of Wolf jumping off the edge of a platform he's currently standing on and him running off the edge of it, that if you input a jump, Wolf will run off and then leap in midair, giving his jump some extra distance and allowing him to reach platforms he's not supposed to. We call this exploit simply a delayed jump. The problem is I'm running Sekiro at 60 frames per second, and I suspect most of you are too. So that means you have a 60th of a second window to input any jump without it being too early or too late, and there's no real visual cue to help. If Wolf runs off the edge, you're too late, and if he seems to stick to the platform's edge while completing the jumping animation normally, you're too early. Saying the delayed jump is inconsistent is an understatement, but you can begin to get a feel for the timing and get it more often than not if you practice. For better or worse, a lot of Sekiro's glitches require the use of this technique, so if you master hitting that specific frame now, you'll be in a much better position for the rest of this video. Case in point, we'll be putting this tech to use immediately as part of the skip for the Chained Ogre. First head up the stairs to the platform he's waiting on, hug the right wall, and perform a delayed jump. Now here's the hard part. A delayed jump alone does not provide enough distance for us to make it to the wall we need to reach. We also have to perform a wall kick off the left of the wall after rounding this sharp 90 degree corner. That means you have to turn into the edge of the platform in order to get the delayed jump to register, time your jump correctly on its one frame window, then reorient Wolf to be parallel with the wall beyond the corner, which you can't see, then we're still not done because you then have to successfully wall kick off the wall while maintaining your forward momentum and still somehow have enough height remaining to grab the roof of the wall just in front of you. Assuming you manage to pull all that off successfully, you will be able to grapple into the top of the building on the left, open the shortcut door, and find yourself on the opposite side of the ogre's fog gate with him still very much alive. Now I know I may have made this exploit sound extremely difficult, and that's because it is. I checked my footage and it took me over 1500 attempts to get it once, meaning it is officially the hardest glitch I have ever included on any video on my channel thus far. But don't let that scare you. The silver lining is that the ogre skip, as of right now at least, isn't a very useful technique. In fact, there's really no point in doing it at all. The platform that you jump to using the glitch is the path that leads from the Bell Demon Idol in Senpo Temple, 
and since we opened the one-way door, that means we now have access to that idol if you follow the path backwards. The problem is that there's yet another one-way door separating the Bell Demon Idol from the rest of Senpo Temple, and though you can see the bridge with the Armored Warrior in the distance, it's too far away to make the jump, but that shouldn't be surprising. The thing is, getting early access to this idol with a Demon Bell is actually an intended feature. You were never supposed to be able to skip the Ogre, but if you go to the right in the courtyard after defeating him normally, and jump down into the cave with the Headless Akko, you can grapple up to a platform that ultimately leads right back to the spot. So while the advantages offered by the Ogre Skip sound really cool on paper, it ultimately only lets us skip a very easy boss in a very difficult way. The real skip we need is a way to clip through this door in the Demon Bell Temple to get access to Sinpo without having to access Ashina Castle, but at least as of right now, such a glitch has yet to be discovered. Anyway, past the Ogre's Fog Gate lies a courtyard with the second optional general, so no skip needed here. Just run past him and rest at the Underbridge Valley Idol. This is the part where we have to deal with the annoying giant snake, so after making it 50% less able to see, rest at the Castle Gate Fortress Idol and prepare for the fight with Gyobu Oniwa, or in our case, glitch number 2. Oniwa's boss arena is massive, the largest in the game even, and there are towering walls on all sides that aren't a giant pit. When it comes to skipping this boss, we would be absolutely screwed if it weren't for this. A wooden lookout tower that just so happens to be somewhat near the wall at the opposite end of the arena, where we need to go. Right, so why is this here? Well, it's an asset that's used all over the game, like the old grave idol where those cannon gunmen are, but it's had its grapple point removed. It basically only exists to serve as decoration, and to give Oniwa something to destroy when he's feeling frisky with his horse. But just because we can't grapple onto it, doesn't mean that we can't climb it. A wall kick and a grab will let you reach the platform, though it's sometimes easier said than done. And Oniwa makes that even harder by ramming himself into it. I found that if you enter his arena and then lead him specifically to this patch of fire on the left, he will decide to run around in circles a few times before coming after you, which gives you time to set this glitch up and pull it off before the tower gets smashed. Wall kick, then another jump and grab while hanging can get Wolf all the way to the top, then by running and once again performing a delayed jump, it's possible to cover just enough distance to grab the edge of the wall of the boss room itself and leave Oniwa behind completely. You can keep going ahead now, but if you'd like to kill Oniwa for good before you leave, follow the roof along to the left and stand on the corner. He'll take care of the hard part for you. Oh, and uh, if you were wondering if this same trick could be used to kill the Demon of Hatred when he appears in this location in the endgame, the answer is... yep. With Oniwa dead, you can now drop down and secure the Ashina Castle Gate Idol. But don't get too comfortable. The Blazing Bull is just ahead, meaning it's already time for another skip. Go straight ahead along the main path and keep an eye out for the grabbable ledge on the right wall, which, if you're like me, won't have realized existed until this video. Then follow the path up and grapple onto the building just ahead, climbing all the way onto the roof. Your next target is this tree. The boss room of the Blazing Bull is just on the other side, and if you want to skip it, we'll have to get on top of the walls of the boss room now in order to walk around the room in its entirety. So jump toward the right side of the tree, and walk kick off the branches in order to... Hold on. Walk kick off the branches and keep holding... Walk kick and keep holding... Hang on a second. Fire rich posture, vitality, blazing bowl, and a little bit of price, chain over here. Oh. Yeah, so, unfortunately, this is one of the earliest glitches discovered in Sekiro, and it was patched out of the game with update 1.03, less than a year after the game's release. Essentially, a massive invisible barrier was added that extends all the way down the length of the wall, meaning no matter how perfectly you time your jump, hell, if you turned off gravity somehow, it would still be impossible to get onto the wall of the boss room this way. Sorry guys, skipping Blazing Bull by glitching past the right side of the tree is simply no longer possible. So I guess it's a good thing we can use the left side instead. First of all, yes, they only added an invisible barrier to one side of the tree. And secondly, yes, this is still in the game today. Everything I'm showing off in this video is being done on current patch, version 1.06. Forgot to mention that earlier, but surely you guys know how this channel works by now, right? Anyway, what you want to do is jump from around the middle of the roof toward the left edge of the tree, wall kick off the edge of the tree's invisible hitbox, and then switch from holding forward to holding right, so that you spin around the edge of the invisible wall and end up on top of the roof. No delayed jump necessary for this one. As you can see, it's safe to walk along the walls all the way past the boss room, despite what the uh, lack of floor might imply. Jump past the lock gate and grapple onto the bridge just ahead. Rest at the idol here, and secure a teleport to Ashina Castle so that you will never have to do the bull skip again in the future. 
At this point, you could proceed to the upper tower antechamber idol and kill Genichiro. But those of you that have played the game before will know that rescuing Kuro from Genichiro at this point doesn't really rescue him. The thing is, all the kids at school are bullying the special prince for being immortal, and he refuses to leave his room until we cheer him up by getting him everything he wants for his birthday. So I guess we'll be doing that now. You can actually get these four items in any order that you like, but I'll be going for the Mortal Blade first, because Mortal Draw is great, and Ichimanji sucks. You heard me. This means that our next goal lies along the path to Senpo Temple. Seven idols, and three bosses total. But with glitches, we'll be cutting that down to five idols, and like, half a boss. You'll see what I mean. After the bull skip, instead of proceeding forward to the top of Ashina Castle, go left instead. Grab the abandoned dungeon idol, then underground waterway, then Senpo Temple. Nothing of real interest thus far. Now we have to make it past all these monks and get to the Shigendo idol. And while this isn't a glitch necessarily, you can skip a huge chunk of them by simply jumping up this giant rock and then leaping across the chasm to grapple the tree root at the entrance of the temple. Seriously, not nearly enough people know about this. Then you can just grapple inside, snag the gourd seed on your way through, and sprint past a few remaining enemies to get where we need to be. Grab the idol, then climb the mountain to where we would normally have to fight the armored warrior. From here you can see the demon bell idol in the distance that we unlocked all the way at the beginning of the video. See what I mean about really needing a skip to be discovered between here and there? Speaking of skips, it's time to skip the armored warrior, or at least, as close as we can get to one. A fog gate pops up the moment we step onto this bridge, so there's no way to proceed unless he's dead. But just because he has to die, doesn't mean we have to kill him. Essentially what you want to do is enter the fight normally, then have the knight break the wall on the far right corner so that Wolf has the ability to jump out of the arena and land on the small edge of the cliff just outside. This isn't a place you're intended to be able to stand, so getting the game to register Wolf as being on this spot is a battle in and of itself, but if you manage to do it, the knight will realize that fog walls are a social construct and run straight through them to the outside of the arena. And I know what you're thinking, but no, there's an invisible wall here, so grabbing the edge of the platform the knight is currently on is impossible, despite how tantalizing it is. So, how do we proceed? Simple, you just wait. When the warrior falls, you'll be rewarded with a prayer bead, a skill, and have fog walls removed so that we can proceed without ever swinging our sword. So far, the only bosses killed in this file are Oniwa and the Armored Warrior, but they both drop to their deaths on their own, so I say we're innocent. Normally, you'd have your sights on the main hall of Zenpo Temple and the fight with the folding screen monkeys, but in our case, we're preparing for the next glitch instead. If you've seen a Sekiro speedrun at any point, you've probably seen someone clip through a wall somewhere in Senpo and plunge down through a white chasm to eventually grapple into the folding screen monkeys arena out of nowhere and get to them early. And there's even one of those clip locations before the Armored Warrior's bridge, meaning we have access to it right now. By jumping into this decorative tree and then sprint jumping into the side of the mountain, you can clip through and fall down into their arena by grappling some part of their environment. Or at least, you used to be able to. This glitch has been patched, and the way From patched it was really sneaky. They didn't fix the clipping into the environment. Instead, they added a giant invisible kill plane above the monkey boss room so that any attempts to fall into their fight would fade the screen to black and reset Wolf to his original position. If you try the skip today, you can get incredibly close to glitching yourself into the fight. So close, in fact, that the boss health bar will appear in the upper left corner of the screen, but that's as far as you'll ever get. As of today, there is no way to access the folding screen monkeys other than the intended cutscene teleport. So in that case, we'll have to skip their fight altogether. To do that, proceed forward into Senpo as intended all the way until you're about to hit the main hall idol. Grapple onto this final tree and aim Wolf's head at this darker spot in the rock wall. Much like Ogre Skip, what you need to do here is perform a delayed jump off the tree and then wall kick off the wall to land on top of the roof. Also much like the Ogre Skip, it's incredibly difficult. While this one didn't take 1500 attempts to make, it was close. Though it may not look it, this roof is not a platform the player was ever meant to access, and the rocks in the corner do not have collision. Jump into them and wall kick and... Yep, we're suddenly in the inner sanctum of Senpo and can pick up the Mortal Blade, even though at this point in the playthrough, Wolf doesn't know it exists. Talk to the Divine Child and bing bong boom, we can kill gods now. That leaves three items on our grocery list, but these two are only necessary for getting access to the Fountainhead Palace, where the last one's found. If we could find a way to glitch ourselves into the palace without the need of the flower or stone, we could go straight for the Dragon Tears and call it a day. So, that's exactly what we're going to do. Our next path is a total of six idols and eight bosses. Yikes. 
Four of them are optional and can just be ran past, but these other four are mandatory. Although we can't skip them exactly, I do know some tricks to make them a lot easier. To start off, teleport back to Ashina Castle and go left again, but this time leap from the bridge and wall kick to the right to grapple into Ashina Reservoir. This particular jump isn't required by any means, but it's a fast way to get there. Straight ahead is the cistern where Wolf was being held prisoner at the very beginning of the game and we need to pass through it. Unfortunately, there's a mini boss that spawns here and when we enter, fog gates will appear on both sides preventing us from leaving until he's defeated. This is a lone shadow, a repeating mini boss in Sekiro's mid game and although the exploit we're going to use to beat him has nothing to do with this enemy in particular, it's a perfect time to show it off. As you know, if you just mash the attack button into an enemy, they're going to deflect those attacks and will probably punish you for being overly aggressive. However, if you manage to back an enemy into a corner where they can't evade, then turn Wolf 90 degrees so that he's no longer directly facing the enemy, they won't try to deflect the attack because they assume Wolf is facing the wrong way and the swing will miss. This allows the very edge of your sword to still make contact and inflict guaranteed undeflected damage. This trick is called the Dead Angle, named after a similar exploit you could use to get around shields in Dark Souls 1's PvP. Though for Sekiro, it's a much bigger deal since every enemy in this game is essentially always in a state of blocking. Take out the shadow for a prayer bead, and continue forward. Grab the bottomless hole idle, then jump into the pit just ahead, spamming the grapple button in order to land safely. Then follow the tunnels deeper until dropping down one more time with the Ashina Depths idle. This next area is Sekiro's Poison Swamp, and features another mandatory mini boss, one of the two notorious Snake Eyes. Our saving grace, however, is that her default spawn point is already near a corner. So by using stealth to get the first death blow, and then using the dead angle for the second, She'll go down with relative ease and allow us to proceed into the hidden forest. Grab the idol here and run past the glutton, one of the optional bosses, to make it to the mist noble. We have to kill him to defog the area and open up Mibu village down below, but anyone who's made it this far into the game knows that an exploit wouldn't make mist noble any easier than he is by default. Once he's down, grab the Mibu village idol, then the watermill idol. Next you'll cross paths with Oren of the water, but once again, she's an optional boss, and by just not talking to her, we can continue on to the next boss with no interruptions. The Corrupted Monk, on the other hand, is very much not optional. Not only does she guard the entrance to the next area we need, but she also drops the Mibu Breathing Technique on death, which is a skill we're going to use to glitch into Fountainhead Palace without the proper items. Problem is, you may have noticed that we've skipped almost every boss in the game at this point, meaning Wolf is very underpowered. Unless you're just a god at the Corrupted Monk, Beating her now at this level is just not going to happen. Luckily for us, there's an exploit for this fight, and ironically, it's also probably the easiest exploit in the entire game to pull off. Here's how it works. The Corrupted Monk is a boss you normally have to fight twice. Once here when she has only one health bar, then again later in Fountainhead Palace when she has three. During the second encounter with her, there's an intended mechanic where you can grapple into a tree above her and perform an aerial death blow to take out one of the health bars for free. Because this same enemy actor is used in both encounters, that means that this same aerial death blow mechanic is present within the first battle as well. And since she only has one health bar the first time you fight her, that would mean dropping down from above would be an insta-kill, something we would obviously like to do. I think FromSoft was aware of this, but they didn't think it would ever come into play since there's nowhere in this boss room to drop down from. Or so they thought. By moving along the left wall of the arena when you enter, you can avoid being detected by the monk and sneak up behind her. Then by spamming firecrackers, fistfuls of ash, or snap seeds, you can repeatedly stun her and make her take a step backwards each time. Then, once you've moved her sufficiently far back, a jump and a wall kick off this decorative stone pillar will grant Wolf enough height to get over her head and perform a death blow, all without ever aggroing the monk. This is without a doubt the easiest exploit you can do in Sekiro, and yes, it is still in the game to this day. Alright, last sequence. In order to get the Divine Dragon's Tears, if we were playing normally, it would require us to work our way through Fountainhead Palace. That's seven idols and six bosses. Obviously, this is nothing like a normal playthrough, so we're going to cut that down to two idols and one boss, the Divine Dragon itself. If you've seen any Sekiro glitches before this video, you've been expecting this one, I'm sure. It's time to air swim. Normally, when you use air swimming to force your way into the Fountainhead Palace, you'd start by clipping into the wall of the Guardian 8 boss room since it's relatively close to Mibu Village in terms of the game world. Unfortunately, that's not an option for us because we never fought Genichiro at the top of Ashina Castle and therefore never got the key for the gun fort. Without the key, reaching the Guardian Ape is impossible, 
so instead of using his boss room to set up the glitch, we'll have to use Ashina Castle itself. Warp back to the bridge just after Blazing Bull, and grapple to the left one final time. Climb up the wall on the right, and once you're on top of the roof, run and perform a delayed jump from the edge and wall kick forward right at the seam of the bricks to clip inside the wall and get access out of bounds. Turn the camera 180 degrees, then sprint jump from this platform into the out of bounds pool of water deeper within the wall. Since we're already out of bounds, by diving into the water and then swimming around the water, we can trick the game into thinking Wolf is still under the water surface, allowing him to fly straight through the open air. This isn't as broken as it might seem at first glance, however, because in Sekiro, there are invisible death planes everywhere, and by just swimming around wherever you want, you will inevitably hit one and drop dead instantaneously. No revive. We've got a long way to go to get to Fountainhead from here, and accidentally hitting a death plane would mean restarting from scratch. That being said, I think I've worked out a relatively safe path, and if you follow my lead carefully, you should be fine. From this out of bounds pool, dive down, swim underneath the grapple point to your right, then up and aim at this half loaded building in the distance with this sharp line leading to it. This is the room that leads into the underground dungeon, and by getting close to the merchant, we can force the game to load in the dungeon so we aren't working blind. Now set your sights on this corner of the rock geometry in the distance and swim straight toward it. Once you get close, swim through it, then resurface to discover that this is yet another pool of water that is ever so slightly out of bounds. By surfacing and diving back down at this spot, we force the game to continue loading more of the dungeon. This also has the unwanted effect of putting a dark filter on the screen that can make it hard to navigate, but if you swim just underneath the floor of the tunnels, you can use them as a guide just above you until reaching a dead end. Swim past it, and up and you should see an open door. This door leads to the elevator to Sinpo, but we need to quit the game and reload at this point to be able to see what we're doing. When you load back in, you should be able to swim left along the tunnel and up to the water wheel that powers the elevator. From this point, swim straight up along the elevator shaft and you will eventually surface within Sinpo Temple itself. But, you know, flying. Swim over the first half of the stage, between the roofs of these two buildings, then make a right and head straight for this group of spirit emblems in the wire of this tree. Swim into the mountainside, just under these red tree leaves. Once you pass through the rock wall, immediately point the camera down and swim straight down. Swim around the left edge of the area's boundary and into the sandwich of these two geometric planes. Here you want to carefully swim just far enough in to allow you to resurface in this pool of water and load in Sunken Valley before submerging yourself again and swimming straight down once more. Follow this giant stone wall and swim through the crack in the environment. At this point, we are very out of bounds and we're going to be a little lacking in landmarks, so I like to just aim for the corner of this square, and then after passing it, swim straight into the middle of this pyramid-shaped object. After swimming forward a bit more, Ashina Depths will load, and when that happens, stop and orient yourself. There are a ton of death planes here, so try not to make any unnecessary movements. We need to quit and reload the game now, but do it in the wrong place and Wolf will die when he loads back in, so pay attention. I like to use this lantern in the environment as a reference point, but if you're too close to it, you're still not safe. So instead, I like to find the lantern, then swim to the right of it, underneath this giant rock, and quit and reload there. So far, quitting out underneath this rock near the lantern hasn't let me down yet. Now the hidden forest should have loaded in, so swim straight up to get over all the environmental walls, and then forward and down to get back in bounds of the stage. From here on, it's easy. You just want to fly through the hidden forest as normal to reach Mibu Village, then fly through Mibu Village as normal to reach the wedding cave where we fought the Corrupted Monk. While we're waiting to get there, I'd just like to mention that if a setup for the air swim glitch was discovered in Mibu Village, we could skip everything we just did, and instead go straight from the lake in Mibu to Fountainhead Palace, which would take like 60 seconds. I feel like it's only a matter of time before that happens for Sekiro, but until then, we'll have to settle for using the Ashina Castle clip or the one in the Guardian 8 boss room. Anyway, this is the part where we would be picked up by the giant straw man and taken to Fountainhead Palace if we had the required items. We don't, but we can fly which is way cooler. Swim straight up and you'll find the straw man just chilling there. Okay, so now we have to make a very long beeline for Fountainhead Palace with no landmarks to guide us. So here's how I set up my angle. For some reason there's a white smudge in the skybox of this area that is always at a fixed location in the distance. So by starting at the tip of the straw man's head and putting the white smudge in the bottom right corner of the screen, that should give you an angle that is relatively good enough to start seeing formations in the distance as you approach the palace. I've never hit a kill plane by swimming anywhere in this area, so the only thing to really worry about is just getting lost in the empty space and having to restart. As you approach Fountainhead, do so so that the buildings with the tall stilts are on your right, and aim for this house in the center. 
be very careful as you begin to get close because we're approaching kill plane territory. To prevent dropping dead, swim slowly forward and stop the moment you see this carp spawn in. When this happens, you are still a bit too close to be safe, but it makes for a great landmark. So swim backward a bit and a little to the right, and you should be safe to go straight up to the surface. Doing so will force Fountainhead to load, and now you can resubmerge to swim up and over the walls to get back in the bounds of the area, just like we did in the Hidden Forest. We're finally here. To disable the air swim glitch, submerge yourself in the water within the bounds of the area, then resurface as usual to re-enable gravity and allow you to grapple and rest at idles again. Grab the palace grounds idle just ahead and swear to never air swim again in your life. From here, just proceed ahead as usual, grab the sanctuary idol on your way, and enter the fight with the divine dragon. Throw his lightning right back at him, and finally get some use out of this mortal blade to collect the dragon tears. Picking this item up will set the game to its end game state when Ashina Castle is being invaded and teleport you to Kuro's room in Ashina Castle, a place we've never been. Talk to Emma, and she will tell you that Ishin has passed away. How she knows this, I'm not sure since he's not here, but she'll give you the secret passage key meaning we can immediately head straight for the Ashina Reservoir for the final battle. On your way out of the castle, avoid getting too close to the top or you will trigger the boss fight with Genichiro that we skipped ages ago. Problem is, the actors for both Kuro and Genichiro are nowhere near here anymore, and this causes all sorts of visual issues to occur due to their assets not being found in memory. And you know, getting to see Santa and the ghost boy is funny and all, but once the cutscene ends, you'll be trapped in a boss room with no boss fight and no way to leave. When you're fighting a boss at the top of the castle, there are invisible walls that prevent you from jumping off, and that's true in this case as well. So yeah, if you value freedom, don't trigger the cutscene. And speaking of fights we can never complete, you may be asking yourself how in the world we're going to beat Ishin at this point with base health and posture and an attack power of like 3. And my answer is, we're not. As much as I'd love to tell you about a game breaking exploit that makes you invincible, or freezes the boss, or gives you infinite attack power, nothing like that exists at this point in time. If you want to follow along this video and do a glitch playthrough, what you're really doing is setting yourself up for an extremely difficult, unglitched final boss. It's not all doom and gloom though. Just because we skip most bosses doesn't mean that you can't explore. There are a ton of prayer beads scattered around the world still, and four of the ones we skipped from not fighting bosses can be picked up right now from the offering box at the dilapidated temple. If it's attack power you're concerned about instead of health, remember that you have everything you need at this point to make the dragon mask and can farm skill points to power up attack as much as you need. The Ashina outskirts stairway idol is a great place to do this, by the way. Oh, and fun fact. Despite night falling and the invading army erecting barricades and setting much of the environment on fire, the fog wall belonging to the chained ogre that we avoided with the very first glitch in this video is still there. When you think you're ready, head to Ashna Reservoir and use the key given by Emma to open the escape route and initiate the final fight. Genichiro is just being Genichiro, so nothing too bad at first. Tell him to put a shirt on and then meet his granddad. For the record, our wolf has literally never seen this man in his life. Stab him once, stab him twice, stab him three times, then put the old man down for his nap and you will have completed Sekiro after only having fought six of its 50 total bosses and mini bosses. To be clear, doing this is more akin to a challenge run than an easy mode. It's definitely much harder than completing the game normally, but now that it's done, I'm really happy with all we were able to cover. Sequence breaks, infinite stun locks, hell, unrestricted flight. Sekiro is definitely broken, but broken in the best way, the way that gives the player the tools, however difficult they may be, to play as efficiently or inefficiently as they like, to explore the landscape of feudal Japan, to hone your skills and collect every item, or to brute force immediately toward the game's climax, to accomplish Wolf's goals with such dedication and focus that not even gravity will hold him back. Despite how many potentially game-ending obstacles we narrowly avoided in this playthrough, our journey is now complete, and yet, as much as we've accomplished, I can't help feeling like we've forgotten something. Oh my god, the kid.